Hey everyone, Greg here. Welcome to the second live episode. I am here with Batwoman herself, Rebecca. She is the biggest Batwoman fan you will ever meet. She also cosplays as uh, Batwoman and she's very awesome. And then I have the always enthusiastic Enrique, also very awesome. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Doing well. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Very awesome, in fact. Awesome. <laughs> totally okay. awesome. That's the word of the day. Awesome. Uh, and then we're going to actually bring in Jay for a moment. He's one of the store managers here at Times Square because he was lucky enough to see Kong Skull Island last night. I'm very jealous. Ooh, 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 ooh. I want to see it. I think it looks, as we were saying, awesome. Very yeah. So how was it? Uh, King Kong was actually a really, really good movie. I highly recommend going to see it. It's got action. Uh, John C. Reilly is awesome in it. He's very, very, very funny. Uh, I'd recommend going to see it. Very good. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. A double recommend. <laughs> thank you for the cameo, Jay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and before we talk about new comics, I want to remind people we have a huge blowout sale going on online, MidtownComics.com, up to 75% uh, off everything. And it goes towards a great cause, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Part of the proceeds will go to them. So MidtownComics.com, you'll see the sale right there, up to 75% off everything and once again it's going towards a great cause uh so now let's get to new comics yeah uh, enrique you are a man who loves so many comics but i this do. week you had to narrow it down to three comics I to did. recommend i narrowed down they? to three picks so first off is the relaunch of rat queens rat queens is an image comics title it's been going for a couple years now and this was them revitalizing the title with a new number one curtis weeb the writer is still on the series and it's a great launching on point if you had fallen off of the title Rat Queens is more or less like a and d campaign brought to life. It's about five foul-mouthed ladies, and they're traveling about the uh, fantastical universe that they live in. It's really cool. It has fantastic art. And what's cool for uh, longtime fans is they actually add a member to the team. So it's got a slightly different dynamic than what the traditional book would have had. So it does offer a new variety if you were a longtime reader. Um, additionally, we have uh, Superman issue number 18. It's part of the Superman Reborn storyline, which is going to be a crossover between Superman and Action Comics. It's really great. It's by uh, Pete Tomasi, who has been absolutely killing it. Superman is one of the best titles to come out of the DC Rebirth. Yes, and is. for 18 issues straight, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's been really great. It's really cool because it looks like it's going to be a storyline that's somewhat visiting the history of the character a little bit, and also following up on some of the plot threads that have been set or seeding throughout the title including uh, the mysterious Mr. Oz and that's illustrated by Pat Gleason right? yeah Patrick Gleason who's uh, Pete Tomasi's longtime partner in crime they work together on Green Lantern Corps they work together on Batman and Robin they're nothing short of phenomenal when the two of them work together um, and then also a bit of a throwback is that this week the epic collection for X Factor came out um, I'm a longtime X-Men fan I've been reading them for years and Marvel is putting out four different X-Men epic collections in the next month and this was the first of them. X-Factor was when they brought the original X-Men together again for the first time in the 1980s. It's really cool. It uh, actually launches with some uh, Avengers and Fantastic Four. So you got a little bit of everybody in this, which is really cool. It also features the debut of Apocalypse, who was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, it is really cool. Really great series. Um, the main series is written by Bob Lay and then Louise Simonson later on. Louis Simonson stayed on X Factor and had one of the most definitive runs of the title. Super recommended. Ages wonderfully well, and it's really cool because, like, I actually like the Avengers of Fantastic Four dynamic of the beginning because it's got some weird little things that I didn't realize happened in the '80s, like the Fantastic Four living in Avengers Mansion while the Avengers had Namor on their team. I cannot imagine that ended well at all, but it's really fun as a little side beat in this really really great storyline. So definitely check it out. Rebecca, what about you? All right, well, first off, I cannot wait to talk about this any longer. We've got the uh, first issue of the solo run for America Chavez, written by Gabby Rivera, who is just at our downtown store, yes. I believe. Um, said I was working in this ad, but I heard it went over really well, and she was great, and we hope to have her back very soon. Mm -hmm. But first first issue out of Starting Gate, I think it knocked it out of the park. It's, um, you know, uh, I always associated uh, America as, like, you know, the attitude and the, like, the... Uh, the fight and the being the champion and superheroing, but she's being put through one of the more difficult trials that a superhero could be put through. She's going to college. So uh, <laughs> I know that would probably be 10 times harder than fighting crime would be for me. So uh, it's exciting to see where this, uh, where Gabby Vera will take us with this one. Um, after that, 
thought I'd keep uh, the Young Avengers theme going. Hawkeye has been consistently great. Um, I love uh, Kate Bishop's uh, humor and everything. And what was great is that I unfortunately have not made my way through all of Braxton's run yet. But you don't really need that entire that entire backstory to jump into this and still appreciate Kate, what Kate Bishop is doing here. As long as you catch up one day. Oh my God! Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a uh, little bit of a. Uh, Jessica Jones style, hmm. uh, kind of private eye stuff. Not necessarily completely that. You still get good old, uh, good old bow and arrow superheroing out there, which is perfect. And last but not least, I will recommend this book till I die. DC bombshells. <laughs> uh, Margaret Bennett's always been one of my favorite writers. Happy to see she's on Batwoman, but this is where I really came to know just how much she appreciates all of her characters, and it's. It's great. It's an alternate universe uh, for all the DC female characters set in the World War II era. Um, and uh, it follows our, our uh, female heroes as they fight Nazis and other uh, really threatening, uh, <laughs> really uh, threatening and probably very relevant uh, um, evildoers. Thank you, Jay. Um, <laughs> But what was great about this is we uh, we finally catch up with what Wonder Woman and Supergirl have been up to since the uh, the events after the last big battle that uh, resulted in the loss of one of the members of the team. Who it is, I will not tell you. If you haven't read it, please catch up. It's really, really great. Um, but it deals a lot with uh, not only like the humor that Bombshells has been perpetually bringing, but also how do these champions deal with loss? And I feel like it was very apropos to finally address that between the two greatest champions, perhaps, female champions of the DC Universe, Wonder Woman and Supergirl. So definitely pick it up, definitely give it a shot, catch up if you haven't caught up yet, it's great. Great, and I'll quickly give my three recommendations. Up first, Nightwing number 16. If you like Nightwing or Damien, you of course recognize this cover. It's a nod to the original Batman and Robin with uh, Graham Morrison and Frank Quietly. Um, I love the dynamic between Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne. Uh, Damian Wayne's my favorite Robin. I know there are very mixed opinions on that. He's a very polarizing character, and understandably so. But I just love their interactions, and Tim Seeley, the writer, nails it in this one. And then, uh, the polar opposite of adorable, Bullseye, number two. Uh, I guess it's adorable. Uh, Tom yeah. Farrell's cuddly. In a way. <laughs> it is exactly what you would expect from a Bullseye comic. It is twisted fun. It is violent. It is messed up. He is just a terrible person that you love to hate. And you love seeing him, well, I love seeing him getting into these ridiculous scenarios and basically inviting all of this chaos. Uh, messed up. It's like I hate Fairyland, but not cute, and there's no fantasy elements. Uh, that's the best thing I could say about it. Um, yeah, you know what you're getting with this one. You really do. And then also, Green Arrow number 18. Uh, this, of course, highlights the first encounter between Oliver Queen and Roy Harper. And it has a very relevant current uh, conflict with a final page that had a jaw dropper for me. I was not expecting that. Yeah, that was a nice twist. And I'm very curious to see where it goes from here. And the writer of this comic, Ben Percy, he'll be at Midtown Comics Downtown, which is 64 Fulton Street, later today. From 4 to 5, he'll be signing um, Green Arrow, Teen Titans, and his brand new James Bond, Bond comic, which went on sale today. You can get up to three comics signed. I, of course, recommend one of each. Uh, Green Arrow, Volume 1, a Teen Titans issue, and James Bond, number one. He'll be there for one hour. Again, 4 to 5. So I strongly recommend showing up early if you want to make it. So those are some of the new comics we recommend. There's, of course, many more, like Batman. Yep. Uh, what else is there? There's Green Lanterns. Uh, uh, I Jeff Lemire's new book, uh, Royal yes. City, came out this week. Written and illustrated. Written and illustrated. Yeah. He hasn't done a book entirely on his own in a while. He's uh, always phenomenal. Jeff Lemire mm -hmm. is basically flawless when he's doing his indie books. So I love his work. I feel like one of Animosity is also out. Uh, oh, check yeah. it out. Um, another Marguerite Bennett great. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. was a really good week, actually. It was a great week for comics and a great week for comic book movie trailers. Well, one of them isn't really a comic book movie, but there are comic books based on it. Right. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Alien Covenant. Two brand new trailers. Mm -hmm. Which one did you like? Which one did you hate? I don't think I hated either. <laughs> I don't think no, it's No, they possible. were both great. So, um, yeah. Yeah. so what did you guys like about both of them? 
Um, well, Aliens Covenant, you know, you know what you're getting into with Aliens movies, but it still scared me significantly on the M train on my ride over here. And I was like, <laughs> oh, God. Um, very bloody, very, uh, very violent. Just, I, I have high hopes for it. It's, it's what you want, you, what you want out of an alien movie, I feel like. So far, I hope, uh, I hope the trailer, uh, def definitely, yeah. uh, is a reflection of what the, uh, what the movie will be. Which yeah. I believe it will be. Yeah, it's yeah. looking like it has the visuals of Prometheus, but more the script along the lines of Alien and Aliens. Basically. Yeah, I'm really excited for Alien Covenant because it seems like they're doing a really good job of ending the plot lines of Prometheus, which were setting up the early seeds of mm -hmm. the like the Xenomorph and what their universe like really entails. But it seems like they're bridging that gap very nicely. In the trailer, we do see both like the proto xenomorph that you see at the end of Prometheus, as well as the fully formed xenomorph the very in a end, yeah. really frightening sequence <laughs> yeah. that looks like it's gonna be really. Imagine that packed. like on your car. I no. don't yeah. want that no. at all. That's <laughs> why I don't have a car. I don't want. I was just about to say this. Oh man. Uh, so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. It looks incredibly fun. Uh, James Gunn, such a talented writer and director. Yeah. Looks like it has so much personality and heart. And comedy and just epic action. Uh, what would you guys think? I think it looks great. I love the tagline, anybody can save the galaxy once. <laughs> I think it's very fun, it's very cheeky, and it kind of makes you wonder, like, oh yeah, they could still really screw things up. Um, but it looks really fun, really cool, mm -hmm. great dynamic. I'm glad to see that they're adding to the cast with this. Yeah. Mantis, for me, is one of my favorite members of the Guardians of the Galaxy from the comics. What should they read if they're curious what about What they Mantis? should read, um, if you really are interested in checking out uh, Mantis, you should read the Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning run mm -hmm. on Guardians of the Galaxy. She pops up frequently throughout that. Um, there was also a miniseries, um, Annihilation Conquest Star-Lord, which was the proto-Guardians of the Galaxy book. Um, which you should check out, which also features her. But she's great, um, the movie looks great, and uh, I'm actually very curious, because I had some friends point out a couple things I didn't realize were in the trailer that could be telling us where this movie's going. Okay. Yeah. Let's avoid potential spoilers for now. Yeah. That's cool. So there's a lot to analyze. There's the definitely yeah. some stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Very interested in these weird gold people. I'll say that much. <laughs> so how do you feel about uh, GOTG Ball 2? It, it looks like a whole lot of fun, and I've been waiting for the sequel for quite some time. Uh, Guardians has been one of my favorite Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe movies. Uh, um, I'm so happy that uh, I get to see the dynamic between Rocket and Groot again, even though we've got a, a different sort of Groot, uh, yes. Yes. More, a far more troublesome Groot, it seems. <laughs> and, a playful uh, Groot. A playful Groot, yeah. and uh, of course Rocket's been always one of the more relatable characters for me <laughs> so i'm glad to see uh glad to see uh he's gonna be back on the screen mm. again i'm very excited yeah. um also really excited that uh gamora's sister is seems nebula. like she's nebula is going to be part of the guardians team perhaps yeah, it looks like a, that's going to cause a little bit an of unwanted friction, ally possibly yeah, an uneasy alliance an yeah. un better way to put it yeah um definitely looks cool um nebula way was good man okay yeah. uh, i thought nebula was one of the coolest parts of the first movie yeah just a very striking visual oh, and yeah. a very cool character the way that she as weird as it is the way that she could like take a hit but reassemble her body yeah. and bring herself back into the fight was really cool and really uh inhuman almost um because it was just so robotic and uh, unnatural it was very cool and there is a new comic book movie coming out tonight actually not that it needs any love and support from us at this point <laughs> Every single, just about every single review has been incredibly positive. I was lucky enough to see it. Um, I loved it. I thought it was tremendous. Uh, oh, and shameless plug, uh, we do have video interviews with the cast and crew of Logan on YouTube now. So check out our YouTube page, Midtown Comics TV. Please check it out. We asked Hugh Jackman why comic book fans should watch Logan. We also talked to the screenwriter about adapting the source material, X-23, and uh, several other actors and producers. So, Logan, tonight. I want to see it again. Rebecca, how are you feeling about Logan? I need to see it, like, immediately. Like, I need to leave here and see it, but... <laughs> <laughs> There's a movie theater, like, one block away. Yeah. And yeah. the greatest part about it is, um, I was never really a huge Wolverine fan. Please crucify me, it's fine. Uh, but <laughs> <That's> fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm really anticipating seeing X-23 on the big screen. She's what's yes. really selling for me. Plus, Hugh Jackman, possible last time he's gonna yeah. be Logan. Uh, can't miss that. He was, he was one of my favorite parts of the X-Men movie, so can't wait. Okay, we gotta wrap up real quick. Why are you excited about Logan? 
Um, I'm super excited for Logan because, like you said, it's Hugh Jackman's possible last run. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's really cool because it's coming from more of a character perspective instead of necessarily like explosions and yeah. plot points. It's I think that's driven, one of the things that people had took issue with with the first two Wolverine movies mm -hmm. was it was more spectacle than character. And Wolverine, as a character, is always more interesting. Yeah, he's the guy that can slice and dice real nice, but... He's also an actual man. He's a samurai. He's the last of his kind. Did you come up with that on the spot? Slice and dice real nice? Um, it's actually, uh, I think Dark Knight Returns, they do it. It's the, like the little mutant guys. They're like, uh, okay. well, slice and dice real nice. Okay, I forgot um, about that one. I'm, I'm, in the animated movie, it's hilarious. Anyways. <laughs> um, but I'm a Which huge really X-23 yeah. fan. I've read basically any every book that she's been in, whether it be Nyx, whether it be mm. um, the original New X-Men run, um, whether it be, I actually just reread. Uncanny X-Men when Chris Claremont first brings her onto the team. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm super excited to see somebody that I grew up with from X-Men Evolution making it into a movie. Never would have expected mm -hmm. to see X-23. And super excited to see just her brought to life. Very cool. Um, so real quick, friendly reminder that Ben Percy will be signing at Midtown Comics Downtown today. Later today, 4 to 5 p.m., Midtown Comics Downtown, 64 Fulton Street. Get up to three comics signed by him, Green Arrow, Teen Titans, James Bond. He you also talks exactly like Black Manta from the old He has an incredibly deep voice. the coolest voice yeah. ever. Just go just to talk to him. Yeah. But get the comic signed as well. So he'll be there 4 to 5, show up early. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, Enrique and Rebecca, both amazing people who work here at Midtown Comics Downtown. Uh, Times Square, excuse me. So feel free to stop by, say hi to them, talk to them about <laughs> comics, talk about Batgirl. It's Batwoman. Wow, I am messing up. I need a coffee, obviously. Thank you very much. You need much. to get me a coffee. <laughs> I will, I will, I promise. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching. Once again, if you want to win uh, Invincible Iron Man number two, the Midtown Comics variant cover signed by Brian Michael Bendis, in the comments, two uh, sentences or less. Tell us what your favorite Brian Michael Bendis issue is and why. Two sentences or less, it's that easy. And you got to be able to pick it up from Midtown Comics Times Square. We'll reveal the winner on the next episode next Thursday. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. That's all. Have a great day. Be good to each other.